So we just uh, demonstrated this uh, order of uh, catch blocks, and so we can move on uh, to other topics, uh, especially this. We're now ready to uh, sort of like preview a Java exception hierarchy, which is kind of interesting that uh, it has many uh, different, uh, uh, different classes uh, that do exist. So various exceptions are categorized into separate classes and contain in various packages. So the exception we use today, exception is the, uh, the top level of, of this specific hierarchy, and it allows us to create our own exceptions. However, there are exceptions that deal with uh, uh, those uh, checked exceptions uh, that the exception uh, provides us. Uh, and. Uh, uh, there are some uh, system exceptions which could be uh, thrown in case if you load the classes dynamically and uh, the specific class may not be found or you may run into a class which doesn't have a specific method. So that could be the situation handled by this set of exceptions. But at the same time, at the same time, uh, uh, there, there's also an additional class, which in its, in its own is a subclass of the exception class, which is called run, runtime exception. And so runtime exception is really uh, an alternative to the, the, to the checked exception, uh, and the runtime exception is, uh, uh, is such that, for, for instance, you can have index out of bounds trying to access a non-existing element in your array. So this is not predictable because index itself could be an integer entered by the user. So therefore, in some cases, there could be index out of bounds, uh, which you cannot predict at compile time. And so for this reason, we have this runtime exception. So for any exceptions uh, that uh, we create as a runtime exception, um, the Java compiler will no longer require us to declare that the method, right, to qualify this method as it throws an exception. Because uh, if this was a, a runtime derived, a runtime exception derived object, um, a Java compiler will basically treat uh, those exceptions and, or, as runtime exceptions, and therefore they will not be enforced to uh, to, to require a programmer to specify that a method throws that specific ex exception. So arithmetic exception, class cast exception, illegal argument uh, number format exception, which we've seen with our scanner uh, class uh, quite a bit, index out of bounds, array index out of bounds, string index out of bounds, null pointer exception are examples of runtime exceptions. Um, there is also situations where you can have uh, an empty stack exceptions or no such element exception when you deal with Java collections, like a stack or a vector. Uh, input mismatch exception is another type of runtime exception where, you know, instead of uh, integer being expected, uh, someone types uh, uh, some garbage cal characters like al alpha, alphabetical uh, characters, for example. Too many listeners. This is this could be uh, a situation where uh, you have a framework which uses basically no notification uh, design patterns, and uh, uh, you exhaust a number of uh, uh, connection points for your listeners, and that's uh, too many uh, too many uh, 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 listener exceptions. There is also, uh, and we're going to see this quite a bit very soon when we when we start using a file system and work with files and directories, there's a tremendous amount of exceptions associated with input-output, specifically working with files and directories. Uh, and they're all brought under the umbrella of I.O. exception. And so uh, there are some examples, like character conversion exception. For example, you could have tried you know, using Unicode and run into a different, different different format, this Unicode is no, no longer recognized, so you can have character conversion exception. And the file exception indicates that you're trying to read past the end of the file. 
file not found exception, trying to open the file that doesn't exist, and under your provisions, you were expecting it to exist, so that could be thrown. Interrupted input out of output exception is when you have, for instance, a blocking call waiting for information uh, to arrive on a certain device or a file, and some exception takes place at, the, at that time. They call it interrupted I.O. exception. Object stream exception is, if you recall, there is a facility that allows you to serialize your objects, and so you can have uh, uh, stream errors because streams are attached to files and uh, as persistent example of persistent storage. And uh, you can have uh, this set of errors, which uh, uh, includes uh, corrupted stream or, or problem with the write or invalid object exceptions and things like that. So this is, uh, this, this is a set of uh, exceptions related to serialization. And this is not an exhaustive list of exceptions that do exist, but it, it, it's, it's, it's important uh, to just uh, be aware that there is some significant, significant development of Java exception hierarchy. And of course, as you start using uh, you know, existing Java packages uh, using standard Java library, you will occasionally run into the situation where you may need to handle errors. And of course, then you need to read the documentation regarding exceptions that could be potentially thrown by, uh, by, uh, by the system. And so you can pro properly structure your try and catch statements so that uh, you, you handle the right, uh, right, uh, right objects at the right time. And uh, notice that it's also that uh, exception itself, exception itself, of course, is an object, right, when it's created. And uh, uh, you can, um, and, and in, in, in all of the, all of the Java, Java objects inherit from, from the object class, and therefore exception is not is not an exception from that rule, and uh, uh, it uh, der derives itself from throwable, and then derives itself from from the object. So uh, you still get the standard object interface with your exceptions. All right, so let's say a few words about uh, the uh, exception class, which we've used successfully in demonstrating a custom exception here. Right, so. Uh, we extended our, our arithmetic range exception from the Java exception class. And so here it is. Uh, of course, it's a subclass of throwable, superclass for many designated uh, uh, exception types uh, predefined by Java library, and specific areas, uh, input-output exceptions, number format exceptions, file-related, like file not found, and uh, array index. So these are good... Uh, examples of uh, such uh, uh, such uh, specific exceptions which derive themselves uh, themselves from the exception class by the way just you should know that exception class whoever derives from the exception class except runtime exception are the so-called uh, uh, um, um, uh, exceptions uh, that need to be caught uh, in other words they're they're checked exceptions, checked by the compiler uh, at compile time. And uh, if, there is a, uh, if there is such exception and it's not handled, then you get a compile error. In many occasions, compile error is good news because it's the easiest type of error to deal with. So therefore, compile time errors are, you know, just a great uh, way of preventing something really dangerous happening at runtime otherwise.